That was the subject line in one of the many emails I've received over the last week or so since we announced that this novena of masses for healing in the church would be held. Too little, too late. And it came from a woman I've gotten to know a little bit. She lives in the neighborhood here in Mundelein, was born, raised, spent her whole life here. She talked about how even as a little girl, she would see the seminary from her window in her home. And in the spring and the summer, all she could see were the trees because the leaves blocked the view. But in the fall and in the winter, when the trees were bare, suddenly the beauty of the buildings came through and how much looking at the chapel meant to her as a child. That was just her lead-in to share the sadness and the rage and the anger and the frustration and the confusion. And she wanted me to know that she'd felt it in 2002, she'd felt it before that, and she could not believe she was feeling it once again, now more deeply than ever. Too little, too late. Glad you're having your masses, Father, but it's too little and it's too late. In some ways, that's not a bad metaphor for where we find ourselves now, that idea of the church for too long may be hidden behind what looks very nice from the outside. But if there's anything that is truly beautiful and truly lasting that will never be too little and can never be too late, because it's not ultimately depending on us, sometimes it can only be seen when the outer beauty sheds away. How do you bear a mystery? How do you carry it? How much does a mystery weigh? What do you use to contain it? St. Paul said to the community that was so beloved of him, this church at Corinth, we are bearers of the mystery. He wasn't only talking about himself, he was talking to the ones whom he had formed. He wasn't just talking about what he could do as a special apostle. He was speaking to them about a shared mission. In the following nine masses, eight masses that will be celebrated after tonight, will be a beautiful opportunity to move throughout the many neighborhoods, the many ethnicities, demographics, different ways and styles of prayer, the many treasures of humanity, in the Archdiocese of Chicago. But there is something unique about our gathering here, because this is a seminary for the Archdiocese. This is a seminary that provides formation for many other dioceses in America and in the world. And maybe especially here, it's important to take up the subject line of that friend's email, too little, too late. This is the place where we look to the future. This is the place where we begin to ask ourselves, what is it that St. Paul was calling us to? What does it mean to be a bearer of the mystery? But it doesn't mean we ask that question alone. And if we do, God help us. A lot of the reasons we've found ourselves in the midst of the tragedy we do is because that question wasn't asked in the right way. What does it mean to be a bearer of the mystery? In recent weeks, there have been dozens, hundreds of very powerful reflections, amazing homilies, powerful talks from priests and bishops in pulpits, from laymen and women. I can't add anything to those that would be more eloquent. But I do want to speak from a perspective that maybe we don't often hear, and that is the perspective of where we are tonight. Because the seminary, by its very nature, is oriented towards the future, and yet it's so deeply grounded in the past, as Paul himself was. What does it mean to bear a mystery? We've heard a lot about the importance, the necessary importance, the critical importance of the role of the laity as we move forward. We've heard a lot about accountability, and I couldn't underscore that more myself. And I'm sure we're going to see it. I don't think this is going to be a time where we just allow things to go back to the way they were. It can't be, and we've already, I think, crossed that threshold. 
but to not rush ahead, to allow ourselves to sit even now with the pain and the difficulty and the struggle of the too little, too late. To be able to say, if I'm going to bear the mystery, I'm going to be grounded in the reality of where I am right now. But we have to be grounded together. And so speaking just for a moment to the seminarians who are here and to the parishioners from parishes, maybe you have seminarians visit, we bear the mystery together. And for us, the important role of the laity is something that's already happening, but heaven knows it needs to happen far more powerfully. But every time a seminarian comes into the midst of a parish, what's happening is he is helped to be taught to what it means to bear the mystery. That it's not something any one seminarian, let alone any one priest or bishop, carries alone, or even comes close to being able to carry alone. We have to teach each other how to bear the mystery. And I don't want to sound overly abstract. We have to teach each other what's important what to look for, how to know ourselves and one another. We have to teach each other what it means to be a member of church. We have to learn from each other's failings. We have to uphold one another in moments of doubt or struggle. We have to hold one another accountable and sometimes deliver the very hard message of this is not where you ought to be. God forbid it ever comes to the point of having to report something harsher and more painful or violent. But we are in this together as bearers of the mystery. The last thing I would just highlight is the image that Jesus introduces in the Gospel. It's a very familiar one. And it's a message of prudence in a way. Don't pour new wine into old skins. Pour new wine into new skins. Don't pour old wine anywhere else but into old skins. And at one level, it makes a lot of sense. You can almost imagine thinking about burying a mystery in that way. Well, how do I do it carefully? How do I do it according to plan? I don't want to do it wrong. I don't want to look foolish. I don't want to waste any wine. But Jesus himself did not take his own advice. Jesus' own life was an example of new wine going into old skins. Every word he said was new wine, going into skins that had been around for far too long, that didn't know how fully to receive it. Jesus never once said, I'm afraid of breaking these skins. I'm afraid of spilling the new wine. He spilled a lot more than that. And I think that's not a bad image for ourselves as we move forward. For church, but I'll just speak to what I know here in the seminary. To be able to say we shouldn't be afraid for the old skins to burst. We shouldn't be afraid to receive what is new and challenging. We shouldn't be afraid to look others in the eye, as they say, with rage or sadness or sorrow or frustration. Your Mass is fine, Father, but it's too little and it's too late. To be able to sit there in the midst of it and to watch the old skins bursting because there's no needle and thread that will ever be strong enough or wise enough or compassionate enough to bring back the old way. New wine for old skins. That's the only way forward. But it's something, and now I speak to everyone but the seminarians in the room, it's something that all of you need to help us receive. It's something that we need you to help us live with to say, yes, the old skins are burst. They needed to be burst. We want you to live with them burst because there are new skins that are coming along. There's new wine that's here. Not to jump ahead, to remain for now in the too little too late, but to know and trust that at the end of the day, it's not about our own efforts or wisdom that will move us on to healing. And the moment will come when our new hearts are ready to receive, when our broken relationships are ready to re-embrace. By our human efforts, it will always be too little. We will never be able to adequately 
manifest the love, the beauty that Christ intended us to have. As human beings, it will always be too little. But in regards to prayer, it will never be too late.